1995, the undisputed biggest rock band in the country was Oasis. But the biggest pop band in the country was these boys. Take that. In all honesty, I always hated them, but the 14-year-old girls at the time just couldn't get enough. Take That had had a meteoric rise to fame and were a phenomenal success in the pop world. But by their third album, band member Robbie Williams was increasingly being pushed to the sidelines of the group and feeling like he didn't belong. Their third album was called Nobody Else, and on that album, Robbie didn't sing lead on a single song. Band leader Gary Barlow said that Robbie had been sent 12 songs to learn and hadn't learned a single one. Nonetheless, their single, Back For Good, hit number one in the UK and was a massive chart success worldwide. Take That seemed to be on the path to world domination, but by June 1995, Robbie Williams had reached breaking point and started going against the band's clean and tidy brief. In the book Robbie, author Sean Smith writes, By the time Glastonbury came around in June 95, Robbie appeared to be past caring what anybody thought, and there were strong hints of the decadence and debauchery to come. He travelled there by himself, armed with a case of champagne, hoping to be admitted to the inner sanctum of rock. He walked in to where Oasis were having a drink. Liam Gallagher turned round, took one look at Rob and declared, Take fucking what? For most of his time at Glastonbury, Robbie hung out with Oasis, and he was also there in the background when Noel debuted his brand new song, Wonderwall. As part of our coverage, we're having some very special live acoustic performances. I'm live, you can pinch me. We have a very, very special performance here. I think we've peaked. We have Noel from Oasis. That's Mr. That's Mr. Mr. Noel Gallagher to you. Right, we've got to interview Mr. Noel, and it is live, and it's uh, it was live yesterday, or summer, was it? I don't know. Anyway, Noel, I mean, you played last night. Was it now? Well, I'm doing an interview. Will you leave me alone to do the play with an interview? Leave me alone. Right. I've just really got a normal bloke here. Off the, you know, just out from. Yeah, I haven't been out in the front so. bit. We've been in the proper presenters area where real celebrities go. But we just brought a bloke in. So let's find out what's going to be like for him. What's your name, mate? And my, my name's Rob. Rob. Yeah. Okay. And what do you do for, for your job? Well, I'm into cockle research. So I go to the best places to find cockles. And can, can you earn a living at that? Well, not really. My day job. I'm, I'm in a, a band called Take That. I sing. Take That. A band. Yeah, we're like trying to practice in your garage and yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. What we're doing is we're trying to get like a, a record deal to get us off the ground, man. But you know, things oh, aren't happening. Like, maybe okay. this exposure will be good for you now. Yeah, well, take that. Remember that name. Thank you very much. And cheer him, everyone, because he's in a band and you know this struggling band and everything. Thank so, you. Yeah. Good luck. We're nice. suffering for the arts, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. nice to meet you. Hi, Jim. Hi, Take care. And when Oasis began their set, a drunken, bleached blonde Robbie Williams took to the stage during Shaker Maker dancing like Bez, with one tooth blacked out with a marker pen. Paolo Hewitt tells it like this. Oasis had been invited to headline the Friday night. It was the festival's 25th anniversary and something special was required. At one point, Liam offered the open-air crowd a fight. He also invited Robbie Williams, then a member of the UK teeny bop sensation Take That, on stage for a minute or so. Within two weeks of that appearance, Robbie would leave Take That. According to Planet Radio, Robbie was unhappy with being told what to do by the group's management. There were the usual musical differences and tensions began to escalate in the band when Robbie started to miss rehearsals due to his excessive partying. He quit Take That one month later in July 95. In later years, at a gig in his hometown of Stoke-on-Trent, Robbie elaborated a little further saying he had been kicked out of the band for hanging out with the Gallagher brothers. So yeah, so uh we all fall out. Well, we didn't all fall out. 
I fell out with her. And then I got kicked out of the band because I went to Glastonbury. It's a weird reason to get fired, isn't it? Or thrown out of the band because you went to Glastonbury. I got sacked because I was hanging out with these lads. So, Robbie left Take That, and shortly after his departure, Take That split up, leaving many heartbroken and enraged fans in their wake. Many Take That fans actually blamed Oasis for the split, and I haven't been able to find these articles or pictures, but I do remember at the time seeing on the TV Oasis being heckled and spat at at an airport by Take That fans. But seemingly, Robbie Williams, having left the Take That fold, he was now welcomed into the world of Oasis with open arms. Robbie began drawing a lot of inspiration from Liam Gallagher for his own solo career, and he was there with the band at gigs, he was even there with the band in the studio. Robbie Williams and the band remained in close contact for the remainder of that year and into the next year as well. Even to the extent that when Noel Gallagher took over Gary Crowley's radio show, on Greater London Radio for one night in February 96, Robbie Williams came on as one of his guests. And at some point that year, Robbie Williams put out a message to Noel Gallagher on the Saturday morning chart show. Again, sadly, I've been unable to find the footage, but I remember it vividly. Robbie appeared on the chart show and said, Noel, you said you'd written a song for me to sing if I was interested. I am interested, and I'd like to hear it. Can you please get in touch with me? Seemingly, nothing ever came of it, but I remember listening to the song Angels on Robbie Williams' debut album and going, I wonder if that's the song that Noel wrote for him. Of course, it wasn't, and it's never come out which song it was that Noel had originally intended for Robbie to sing. So, at first, seemingly, they were all pretty close. In 1996, they all played a celebrity football match in which Liam and Noel went up against Pulp, Robbie Williams and Blur. Oasis lost 2-1 to Pulp, but Liam got best goal scorer. And you can really hear the kind of the closeness and the good humour between Robbie Williams and Noel Gallagher in this phone interview on The Big Breakfast. And oh, and I see you saw me girlfriend out in Japan then. Hey, listen, have you heard about that? Yeah. Tell, yeah, tell, 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 tell the nation. Well, he's doing, this, he's doing this interview in this magazine, yeah? yeah. And um, so I'm looking through the previous issues magazine, and in, in the centre pages, right, there's this big picture of you and my girlfriend, Meg. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said to the woman, I said, what, what does that caption say? And it says, oh, that says, Robbie Williams' new girlfriend. And she says, oh, does it now? Ah, well, oh, you're stealing your friend's girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 Guess what, I'm going after the big breakfast. Hey! Oh, you're going after the full breakfast, aren't you? And hey. you're in Japan. I know, mate. And, and you're in the shit. Oh, oh hey! Watch your language. Yes, language? Sir, I probably am. <laughs> right, no, listen, Danny wants to have a word with you. All right. All right, Lola, look after yourself, yeah? See you later, mate. Say my regards to everybody. I'll see, you, see you next week, yeah? All right, tell Bonehead right. I said moon. Right. <laughs> ooh. Moon, ooh, when? Ooh. Go on, then. Go on, son. <laughs> see you, mate. Things seemingly remained pretty friendly through to about the end of 1997, at which point it kind of all fell silent and then slowly, gradually began to move into hostile territory. There's never really been a satisfactory explanation as to why they went from being quite close to all of a sudden, a year and a half to two years later, hating each other's guts but it does seem entirely possible that it all centres around this lady, Nicole Appleton. According to The Mirror, Robbie Williams struck up a new relationship with singer Nicole Appleton, who he met backstage at Top of the Pops on December the 7th, 1997. And according to MTV, Robbie and Nicole dated for nine months and then split up midway through 1998. According to The Herald, they were on again, off again, right the way through until January 1999, when they finally split for good. However, 
Apparently, Nicole Appleton was pregnant with Robbie Williams' child and aborted the baby without him knowing anything about it. He apparently only found out when she published it in her autobiography. Now, during this same time period, Liam Gallagher and his then wife, Patsy Kensit, were also constantly on again and off again, their fallouts stemming from Liam Gallagher's constant cheating on her with other women. In the year 2000, Liam and Patsy split for good. And that same year, Liam and Nicole, Robbie's ex-girlfriend, went public that they were in a relationship. So, there was a definite on-again, off-again overlap between Robbie and Nicole and Liam and Patsy. And at the end of it, Robbie had split up with Nicole and Liam was now dating her. And at the end of it, everybody hated each other. However, the first public dig came from Mr Diplomatic himself, Noel Gallagher. And as for poor, poor old Robbie, you know, I mean, I, do, I feel sorry for him really because he's just not quite getting it right, is he? He's like, he don't, can't decide whether he's an alcoholic or a drug addict or whether he should <laughs> kick it or carry on or get into smack or go and see the Church of Scientology or something or maybe get another tattoo or something like that. I don't know. But, you know, as long as they all end up in the same asylum, sharing the same straight jacket. In an interview with Heat just days before Standing on the Shoulder of Giants came out, Noel said, I've never been Robbie Williams' friend. He was Liam's friend. Liam used to invite him to the gigs and stuff like that. I've been in dressing rooms with him, I've had conversations with him, but I wouldn't even consider him to be a friend of mine. Why? Because he was in Take That. He's a fat dancer from Take That. Somebody who danced for a living. Stick to what you're good at, that's what I always say. Robbie, who had struggled with weight gain, seemingly took that quite personally, and he retaliated shortly afterwards by sending Noel a funeral wreath. The Metro reports, Robbie sent a wreath to Noel upon the release of Oasis's album Standing on the Shoulder of Giants with a message saying, R.I.P. Heard your latest album. The NME also reported, speaking last Wednesday in Cologne, Robbie said, I don't really want to beat up Liam, I want to beat up Noel, because he's a little shit. He's a mean-spirited, nasty little dwarf. But... Even though it was Noel who made the first dig in the press, Robbie seemed to have the biggest problem with Liam because at the Brit Awards that same year, 2000, he said this. Would anybody like to see me fight Liam? Would you pay to come and see it? Liam, 100 grand of your money, 100 grand of my money, we'll get in the ring and we'll have a fight and you can all watch it on TV. What do you think about that? Now, are you going to do it or are you going to pussy out, you f***ing wimp? Oasis were not at that awards ceremony. They were currently on tour elsewhere in the world. However, according to Robbie, Liam accepted his offer of a fight, but only if it could take place down an abandoned railway track. When am I having the fist fight with Liam Gallagher? <laughs> I know, let's get it on! I know, man. Um, I've heard, I read in the papers today, that he's back in England. Ooh. After being away for such a long time. Yeah. I might go and take a trip up to Primrose Hill and go and find him. That's what I'm going to do after I've been here. So by tomorrow, you might read it in the papers that some pop star swap from the band, he's got a big black eye and broken arm. I don't know, I love him. Do you know the real reason behind all that? No. I'm gay and I want to have sex with him. And I just didn't know how to... He's cute. I but didn't he's know how to out myself in public. Kind of why? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You tried to do something with him? Yeah. He just really... He just... He, know, he knows he fancies me. Do you know? He knows he wants me. So, for some reason I genuinely cannot fathom, in that video Robbie claimed to be gay 
and to want to have sex with Liam. Later that same year, Oasis and Robbie Williams were once again at the same award ceremony and Liam responded both to Robbie's threat of a fight and, seemingly, to Robbie's strange comments about being gay. This one's from Robbie, as usual. <laughs> Understands the letter Q. And I'm just going to keep me gob shut. And what about the thing with Robbie? Is it, I mean, is it ongoing? Is it real? Listen, the guy offered me out, right, when I was in the country, in front of MTV, right, yeah? Yeah. He didn't say his fucking words today, right, yeah? When I'm four tables across the road from him, right, yeah? Yeah. Right? I know his record company said, oh, yeah, be cool. I ain't going to say anything, because he writes great fucking songs. He left early. Do you think you drove him out? No. No? I reckon he drove himself out, mate. Do you think? Oh, touched in the crotch by Liam Gallagher. He slugs my band off, he slugs my wife or oh, my girlfriend off, yeah. he slugs my brother off, I'm going to knock him out. Anyone else? However, I do remember at the time, Liam Gallagher turned down the prospect of an actual fight with Robbie Williams, saying he was now a dad and needed to set a good example. Two years later, Robbie was seriously on the rise, whereas Oasis had begun a slight downward turn. In Now, in May 2002, Noel said, I think Robbie is a very, 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 very misguided, easily led, stupid, foolish young individual who definitely benefit from a slapping. I'd probably kick him down the stairs a couple of times myself, not that I'm a violent person. In fact, I don't even like confrontation. But... If you could get slapped on the NHS, if they could provide it as a medical service, then I think he'd definitely need to be taken to hospital and held down by some people in white coats and just slapped about the face for half an hour. He's a fake. He's a complete fake. Robbie's probably the biggest fake that's ever been, and yet he thinks he's Elvis. I had the displeasure of watching his film, Nobody Someday, when it was on telly recently, and I felt like vomiting after about five minutes. Apart from that, he's a nice guy. But at this time, the tide of the music industry had very much turned in Robbie Williams' favour and kind of drifted away from Oasis. And as the battle between Robbie and Oasis showed no signs of abating, Robbie Williams began actively undermining them in ways calculated to sting as much as possible. In the summer of 1996, Oasis had broken records by performing two nights at Nebworth to 250,000 fans. So, in the summer of 2003, Robbie Williams played three nights at Nebworth to 375,000 fans, an event believed to be the biggest UK pop concert ever, demolishing Oasis's record at a time when they no longer were in a position to retake it. The Guardian reported, Following Oasis's triumph at Nebworth in 96, Williams decided he'd knock them off the top spot, selling out three nights as opposed to their two. After confirming the live stint, Williams allegedly sent Noel a pair of tap dancing shoes with a message reading, Dear Mr N Gallagher, You said two nights at Nebworth is history. Well, I guess three is just greedy. Yours, Rob. P.S. Finding it difficult to find adequate support for my show. What are you doing on the first and second? Oh, and the third. Robbie played Nebworth, but still, it didn't really seem to make him feel any better. Because in 2004, he left the country. In hindsight, saying that's because he felt bullied out by the Gallaghers. The Mirror reports. Robbie says constant jibes echoed by most of the rock establishment and sections of the media were unbearable. It left him depressed and eventually inspired his move to LA in 2004. Robbie said, My brand of entertainment wasn't deemed worthy because of how I presented myself. There was a culture of Robbie Williams is not cool. That was apart from the three million people who bought my albums. Every time I watched TV programmes, 
there were people being hateful about me. That was just wrong and grotesque. It was unbearable. I just left the country. Liam said that I should be hung. Noel said that I was the fat dancer from Take That. I remember every single syllable of every single thing they've ever said about me. Look, there's Oasis. Look at them, they're fantastic. I want to be just like them. Nice one, nice. Hope you're out. Hi, Oasis. I'm Robbie Williams. What? The fat dancer from Take That. You've heard of me. You want a fag? The sign says uh, no smoking. <laughs> we don't follow rules, Rob. We go our own way. Yeah. Apart from the music, that just sounds like the Beatles. Shut your fucking mouth, our kid. Oh, it does. And a bit of Slade, a bit of Quall. Hi, right, Kate Moss. Hello. Give us a quid, I'll shame my tits. And yet, even now, living on the other side of the world from each other, the fight continued. In October 2006, Robbie released an album called Rude Box, and it had a secret track on it called Dickhead, which allegedly was written about the Gallaghers. It's both really cringy and actually quite funny, and it contains this line. I wasn't looking at your bird, dickhead. She was looking at me, dickhead. Which could perhaps be a reference to that time in 98 and 99, when Nicole Appleton was in the process of splitting with Robbie and getting together with Liam. Noel, however, heard the song Dickhead and was not impressed. In an interview with the Scottish Sunday Mail, he said, I don't like Robbie Williams' records. It's not my bag at all. I remember seeing him once at the Brits after he'd had one of his six-month periods of mouthing off. He put his hand out to shake mine and I said, Not when you're wearing eyeliner, Sonny Jim. I've heard about the secret track on his latest album, Rude Box, attacking us, but I can't be bothered with it anymore. He's got his thing. He sells out stadiums around the world. Good luck to him. Robbie is probably the biggest solo artist in the country, but I'd eat him for breakfast because I write better songs. I'm a better singer and I've got soul. End of fucking argument. If I decided to go solo, I'd be enormous. But as that decade continued, Robbie Williams' popularity just continued to grow, causing Noel to keep lashing out in the media in increasingly harsh ways until it got to the point where he offered to assist Robbie in committing suicide. The Metro reports, in 2007, Noel said, the music Robbie makes is dog shit. And more recently, he said he would put a bullet in a gun and give it to Robbie as he's eventually going to do it himself anyway, as he is a grossly unhappy person. Charming. In 2009, Oasis split up, and Noel did go solo, and Liam and the rest of the band formed BDI. And the next year, at the Brit Awards 2010, Liam Gallagher and Robbie Williams were both there at the same awards ceremony again to collect an award. However, Liam Gallagher's then wife, and Robbie's former flame, Nicole Appleton, was also there doing interviews. And it was plain to see that Robbie was still willing and able to lay the charm on thick with his old flame. Darling. How are you? I'm very, very good. It's lovely to see you. I haven't seen you in ages. Forever and ever Since and ever. Since the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a decade. What are you doing? What are you two what doing? What does it look like? I know Mike. you're doing the presenting thing. Who's yeah. it for? What are you doing? ITV2 at the Brits. Nice. So we did it last year. They loved us. They nice gig. Back. Nice. And we get free champagne. Bet you weren't expecting to see me, were you? No. Not just then. <laughs> not just then. We knew you were here, but not just then. I was a bit like that. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do that after the here. show. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really happy to see you. Oh, thanks, Sue. Yeah. He's like, ah. I see you don't change your perfume. Oh my god. You remember? Yeah. No, that's <laughs> ugly. That was ugly. I'm embarrassed. Right, Back to whoever. <laughs> Apparently, backstage. Liam went into a fury. There were reports of him pacing around angrily and pushing a female steward to the floor. And when it was his turn, he gave this pretty confusing interview. 
So how does it feel to win the best album of 30 years at what? the Brits? Well, 30 I, I don't think we deserved it, like, because like, there's been some great hours, but if we're going to fucking get invited, then I'm going to turn up and have it, and I'm going to fucking, like, play the game, especially with these missus out there who fucking standing like some bird ass. And I've been silver before, and I've been pushed over, and I got up and I fucking carried on, like, yeah. So he's sitting there going, hey, you pushed me bird over, because she's silver. Who's I was it? gold Who? and I was bronze too. Who? Who are you talking about? Just bird holes. <laughs> Oh my god, we have so many things going on. Can't wait to hear. Okay, well, we love you and well done. Nice, it was nice. Well done, babe. Now, can we all take loads of Class A drugs, right? <laughs> the next year, in 2011, Robbie Williams decided to have another crack at upstaging Oasis. This time, as part of his reunion with Take That. Just as Robbie had gone out of his way to one up Oasis at Nebworth, he did the same thing at Wembley Stadium. In the year 2000, Oasis played two nights at Wembley. So, in the year 2011, Take That played three. And Robbie said this. Noel Gallagher, you can kiss my perfectly formed Two years later, in 2013, Robbie was now absolutely relishing how much the tables had turned. BDI were playing to a crowd of 1,500 people at the Manchester Ritz, while he was playing the Etihad Stadium. And there's one over here that says, Liam is a knob. <laughs> Just, just Liam, just know this, that when Oasis does get back together again, <laughs> you'll never be bigger than I am. And when you're looking out in wonder when Oasis does get back together again, and you're giving it the look at what we've created, just remember, Fatty here did four nights in your fucking backyard. Liam, sounding pretty defeated, said this. Be nice, that size band. Everyone keeps saying we're doing small gigs and like we're gonna big announce big stadiums. Mm. That's where we're at, and we'll stay at that until you pull your fingers out and buy records. And we should be playing yeah, he had three nights, not some fat idiot. Do you mean Mr. Robbie Williams? Well, yeah, you know what I mean? It's a shame, isn't it? Real music. It's just do you know what I mean? But it's the way the world is these days, isn't it? Do you still dislike him? No, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just, it's just him. I'm going on him because it's just him. You know, it could be any clown, you know what I mean? I just think it's a shame that we're doing three nights and we're in a band like, you know, a band like us are doing one night in the Ritz. Poor, mate. However, Shortly after this, Liam Gallagher and Nicole Appleton split up. And so, the issue that seemingly came between Liam and Robbie in the first place was no longer an issue. And then, in 2015, a kind of unspoken, awkward peace offering was made from Noel to Robbie. The enemy reports, quizzed on whether or not he is friends with Noel and Liam, Robbie said... Not really, no. But we rented a place near Knowles and his wife sent us a nice bunch of flowers. I bet she went to a nice school to do a nice thing like that. It was surprising. However, Robbie continued to take the piss out of Oasis at gigs, regularly impersonating Liam. And in 2019, Robbie remade the offer to have a boxing match with Liam. But this time, Robbie had actually been trained in boxing. 
However, before things could escalate, the news came out that Robbie's dad, sadly, had contracted Parkinson's disease. Liam tweeted him saying, Oi, Robbie Balboa, it's LG. I hear you got shit going down in your family. I'm sorry to hear that. Love and light going out to your family. Stay cool and in tune. Liam Gallagher. And Robbie Williams responded, Brother, that means a lot to me. Carry on being celestial. The world needs you. Your fan, Rob. And seemingly, from that point on, both Liam and Robbie buried the hatchet. According to the Daily Mail, Noel recently appeared to pay Robbie a backhanded compliment when he said he wishes he had penned 1997's Angels as he compared it to the Wonderwall hitmakers. Speaking on the Matt Morgan podcast, Noel Gallagher said, I've heard it and I thought, I wish I'd written that. Angels is Oasis by numbers. Add a fucking electric guitar on it and it would be. However, despite any criticism or backhanded comments from the Gallagher brothers, Robbie insists he is still a fan of the band, saying, Well, that's as complimentary as it's ever going to get. That's high praise indeed, so I'll take that. I am a big Oasis fan. Nostalgia still pays. I am still that man, but sober. 22 years old in my head and a massive fan of Oasis. No matter what has been said or what has been done, I still dig the band. After Liam Gallagher reached out to arch-enemy Robbie Williams to end decades of bad blood between them, former Take That Man Robbie now has a new problem, finding a new hate figure. He says, How good are Oasis? My long-running feud with Liam ended. Just massive respect now, and back to being the fan I was.